Today I'm going to show you how you can install a Bluetooth audio connection on your car for less than $10. So the first thing we need to do is remove this radio from the dashboard. So I'm just going to use my brother's toothbrush here and pry up on this lower panel. And then once that's out of the way, I can reach in here and just pry up the HVAC vent panel around here. Now looking at the bottom here, there are four 10 millimeter bolts that we need to remove in order to get this radio out. There's two connectors at the back here. And then you have this top one here. And then you've got your FM, AM, antenna wire. So here we've got the radio removed from the vehicle. It's an OEM Toyota radio that comes with a standard CD player and an AM FM. On the side here we have these brackets that are held on by four 8mm bolts that we need to remove because we're going to have to open up this guy in order to tap in an auxiliary input line. And then I can remove this bracket. Now on the back here we got a couple of Phillips screws that I'm going to remove next. And with all the screws removed, I can remove this heat sink from the back of the radio. A couple more screws across the bottom here to remove this bottom panel. And remove this bottom panel. And then I'm going to use a flat screwdriver and come in here and pry up on these tabs. And then that's the radio face right there. Now here we got a couple more screws that we need to remove. And I can pop off this front panel. Now there's a couple more screws over here that I'm going to remove the main board away from the CD-ROM assembly. Now there's a little ribbon cable connector here that I'm going to remove. And then the board should be able to be removed. So just a quick overview of how this radio board works. You've got your digital sound processing chip over here. And that takes all the inputs from your aux lines to your CD player as well as the radio and feeds it through these amplifiers here and then out to the speakers at these ports here. Now to this heatsink we've got another set of transistors and another processing chip. Over here we've got the chip that controls this interface here which is the buttons and LCD screen and then we've got the ribbon cable here which attaches to the CD-ROM. Now that's where the key to this hack is. We're going to be tapping into the CD lines because it's an analog audio signal and we turn it over here. You look closely you'll see left channel, right channel and then of course you can take any ground. This ribbon cable here connects over to the CD player on the radio over here and we're basically going to be injecting our own signal on top of what's playing on the CD. Now through some experimentation I found that these two points here are not the ideal points to solder to, they kind of give a little bit of interference. So what I did was I traced the connections from the CD ribbon cable over to this port here and I found that it actually has to go through a couple of filters over here in this area. So what I'm going to do is I bypassed that and I traced it all the way over to the chip here. Now if you google this chip you're going to find the pinout for it which actually tells you that pins number 52 and 61 which leads to the back of these two capacitors here are your CD inputs and that's where you're going to need to solder your two lines to with left and right respectively. You're also going to need to solder a ground wire to which I found this point over here to be the same as ground everywhere else on the board using my continuity tester. So here we have the chip that controls all the audio signal on the vehicle. Over here you can see there's a CD input on pin 51 and another CD input on pin 62 which represents your left and right channels that are soldered in line to resistors. We're going to be adding on our auxiliary lines in behind these resistors here. So now with the radio all apart we come to the main part of this hack the components required to make everything work starting with of course this 3.5 millimeter jack and cable which I got from the dollar store for like a dollar I've already stripped out the wires on this side and this side will allow you to plug in any phone to play music on your stereo now for you iPhone people out there we're going to take this one step further and connect a Bluetooth module to this auxiliary line. Now these here can be had on eBay for about three or four dollars and basically what it does is it takes power from the USB side here and it'll plug in your auxiliary line here and create a Bluetooth connection so you connect your phone to this and this will play out to the auxiliary line on your car. Now the final piece of this puzzle is a power inverter which you can have from the dollar store for about two or three dollars and that's going to take your 12 volts from your car and convert it over to the USB connection needed for your Bluetooth module. So all in all this hack can be done for about ten dollars and of course you're going to need a soldering iron to put it all together. So here we have the list of what we need to buy from Amazon. As you can see it adds up for less than ten dollars. You got your aux cable, your Bluetooth adapter, as well as your USB charger to power the Bluetooth adapter. Now using a 3.5 millimeter pinout diagram I've determined that this red wire is my left wire, the white one is the right wire, and the yellow one is my ground wire. So I'm going to solder them accordingly to my motherboard. Alright, so we've got the left and right wires soldered up. Now I'm just going to go ahead and solder the ground wire to over here. 
And that is the basis of an auxiliary input hack. I'm just going to put down a piece of tape here to hold these wires from pulling out from the solder joints. Now normally these come with a case. The next step would be to remove them. Next up we're going to take the case off of this power inverter and remove the circuit board. Now here's a detailed look at the power adapter. You've got your 12 volts over here that connects to this port and the ground port over here. So I'm going to solder to the respective points here and here. Alright, so with the auxiliary hack done, I'm going to place the motherboard back into the shell here. Next I'm just going to go ahead and replace all the screws that hold the motherboard down. Now we could opt to have our power inverter and Bluetooth adapter installed inside of the radio itself, but then you're going to have to find a 12 volt power source in here. I've tried it and it almost fried my radio, so I actually recommend that you route the aux wire outside of the radio and find an external power source to power your Bluetooth module. Now this aux wire here perfectly routes out the side of the antenna wire over here, and then I can place the back panel on. Then I'm going to go ahead and replace a ton of these screws on the heatsink. Next I'm going to take the front panel piece and install that over here. Then replace this little piece here. And then finally I'm going to place this piece onto here. And then I'm going to place the front circuit board onto the front here. And finally you should be left with the regular Toyota radio with an auxiliary line sticking out. We're going to go install this into the car and test it out and then connect our Bluetooth module. Now to make the connection to Bluetooth we're going to take the Bluetooth adapter here, plug it into the auxiliary line and then take the USB part and plug it into the power inverter and then these two lines here which I've extended out will go to a 12 volt power source behind the dashboard. I'm going to wire that up next. Now in order to insulate the circuit board from touching anything behind the dashboard I'm just going to run some tape around the whole thing. Now you could put this in a project box but I'm just going to be mocking this up for now. And here we have everything all wired up. Get your Bluetooth module on the outside here. I've got the brackets installed. And of course, with anything you take apart, there's always going to be extra screws left over. Let's put this inside the car and see how it works. So here we have the radio ready to go in. The Bluetooth module along with its power wiring will have to be connected down below. So I'm going to snake that wire down. And I'm also going to connect this radio antenna over here. And then I can go ahead and install the head unit back into the dashboard. And then I'm going to replace these four 10 millimeter bolts. Now I'm going to be powering my Bluetooth module off of the cigarette lighter inside of the center console. So I'm going to need to remove this center console next. Pry this piece off. We'll pull this back here. And then we'll pull off this piece here. So if we remove the ashtray here, and then remove this console piece. And if you look closely at the cigarette lighter, the outside sheathing here is actually the ground. And the inside point here will be your plus 12 volts. So you need to make sure that you wire up your polarity of your power inverter to match this and you don't flip them otherwise you'll blow it like what I did. I've also got some extra wiring going over to my dash cam so I'm just going to be tapping into these. Alright so I've made my two connections here so I'm going to go ahead and just tighten those down with some tape. Alright so with my connections all made it's time to go ahead and start putting these consoles back together. I'm run a zip tie around all the wiring here. Tidy that up. And then we'll replace the center console piece here. And then of course plug in the cigarette lighter. And then install. Bluetooth mode. Paired. As you can hear that the Bluetooth is just paired by itself. And then I'm going to reinstall the center console. Finally back up the radio here. I'm going to install the center console vent. And then reinstall the HVAC controller. And now here comes the moment of truth. I can go ahead and turn the ignition key on my car to the on position. And then when I turn on the radio. You can see that my AM, FM and CD should work as normal. So now because we've wired the auxiliary input to the CD lines of this radio, we need to trick this radio into going to CD mode in order to read our Bluetooth input. So I'm going to insert a CD. Now this CD has just got a blank track on it and that will overplay on top of my Bluetooth signal. So the next thing I'm going to do is go over to my phone, turn on my Bluetooth connection. And then I'm going to select YETM1, which happens to be the name of my Bluetooth module and connect to that one. So now that my Bluetooth connection has been made, I can go over to any music app on my phone and press play. And of course I'll be able to use the volume and equalize button just as I would for a CD. And this will give me CD quality sound. Now in some vehicles, optionally, you might need to add a ground loop isolator to filter out any noise that may come through the speakers. It just plugs in directly to the 3.5 millimeter jack in line with the Bluetooth receiver. And you can find these for less than $10. We're going to need to trick this radio to taking a CD. Really? Now are you going to jam? <laughs> 